Jimmy Speed and Flash arrive just in time to stop the signing of the papers. There seems to be some mystery connected with the telegram received by Mrs. Croft, as Speed did not send it. You'll recall in the last episode, night was just falling as Jimmy and Barbara heard the droning of an airplane flying above the clouds. As the present episode opens, it is early morning of the following day. Jimmy, Speed, and their friends are outside the ranch house talking. Let's listen. <laughs> yeah, old Flash was plenty tired, but he feels great this morning. Wants to go hunting right off the bat. I'm so glad you boys had a good night's rest. Say, Jimmy, did you tell Mr. Robertson about the airplane we heard last night? I sure did, Barbara. And he can't figure it out. That's a mighty strange thing. Really, I expect most anything to happen down here. Yeah, but it's a mystery to me why an airplane would be flying around down in this part of the country at night. Didn't you say it sounded like this ship came from the south, Jim? Yeah, I'd swear to that, Speed. Well, there's not a town or village south of us for a hundred miles. And then you hit the Rio Grande River. I don't know. I can't figure it out. Yeah, not only that, Speed. Why would they be flying above that cloud bank? Yeah, that's another thing. The average pilot flying down around here, especially at night, would keep under those clouds. Jimmy says this fellow was above them. He sure was. There was no mistake in that. Oh, yes. We could have seen him below the clouds. Well, let's not worry about it. Now, what are you going to do about your ranch, Mrs. Croft? I feel, Mr. Robertson, that in fairness to Mr. Bender, I must reach a decision today. You're accepting his hospitality, and he's been good enough to invite us down here... I see no reason to delay the matter any longer. Mm, but I just don't trust him. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, Mrs. Croft. Jimmy and I will take off on our plane and fly over your ranch. Oh, I feel that I'm putting you to a great deal of trouble. Oh, not a bit. We enjoy it. Say, I wouldn't have missed this trip for anything. We'll look this land over as carefully as we possibly can. Then we'll fly up to San Rafael and try to get a line on these benders. We'll also try and discover something about that uh, telegram. Yes, I certainly would like to have it explained. Yesterday we had lunch at San Angelo. I made a few inquiries around there about Bender. To be quite frank, we got little or no information. No one seemed to know the old man at all. All we could find out about Rip was that he flew around in an airplane and lived down here on a ranch. The airport manager at San Angelo didn't seem to think much of him, though. Yeah, that's right. Rip Bender has an unsavory character, according to this chap at San Angelo. He seems to drink pretty heavily and... Well, his reputation is none too good. I'm not surprised at that. However, this is purely a business matter, of course. Bender apparently has the cash to complete the deal. Yes. He seems rather anxious to display the $3,000 in bank notes. I guess he feels the sight of the money is a temptation to me. Yeah, that's typical of him. I should imagine the banker at San Rafael would know something about the Benders. I intend talking to him. He undoubtedly will give us a line on these people. You know, to sum up the whole deal in a few words, you either should accept Bender's offer or, or find out why he's so anxious to buy your property. Yes, that's exactly right. Well, I guess we all feel that Bender has some reason for wanting the land so badly. You mean other than using it for grazing land? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true, Jim. Flying down over this Diamond A ranch last evening, I noticed they had a world of grazing area. They certainly don't need another 10,000 acres for grazing. Well, there's just no question about it. Bender has a reason for wanting the property, but we don't know what it is. I feel much safer with you boys here to guide me in the matter, and I'll never be able to express my appreciation. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Croft. It's a swell excuse for us to have a good vacation. Well, Jim, let's get started. We'll get in a good morning's fly and then hike on up to San Rafael. Okay, let's go. I'm all set. Good luck, boys. And don't take any unnecessary chances. Oh, we won't, Mrs. Croft. Don't worry about us now. Now, here's this map of Mrs. Cross Ranch, Jim. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do. Oh, by the way, Speed, shall I fly the ship? Yeah, I want you to do all the flying. Okay. Now, let's see the map, Speed. Here, I'll lay it out on a wing. Oh, yeah. Here's the Diamond A Ranch House. Now, now, this is a Croft property. All this area in here. Mm-hmm. Directly west of the Diamond A. Yeah. It's pretty much broken up, too. On the western edge, Jim, are some mighty high elevations. A small mountain range runs right through there, do you see? Oh, yeah. If it wasn't for these clouds, we could see the range and the peaks. Now, Mrs. Croft tells me that down here, right here, is the Croft Ranch House. I marked it with a pencil there. Oh, yeah, I see it. I guess it's nothing more than a hunting shack. It's boarded up now. Mrs. Croft says that as far as she knows, it hasn't been used for years. Now, after we get off, you better head straight west, Jim. We'll cover this, this area in here first. Then we'll work on down south. Well, boys, 
You getting ready to look over the property of the Crofts? Yeah, Rip. We're going to give it the once over. I reckon you'll find it just like I says, nothing but mountains and gullies. Oh, uh, what have you got there? A map of the place? Yeah, this is an old plan that Mrs. Croft gave us. Oh, yeah. Huh? Well, uh, now I'll tell you, boys. There ain't nothing over in the western half but a range of mountains and high ones, too. That's what I figured. If it weren't for these here clouds, you could see them. And say, boys, you better be mighty careful flying around them mountains. There's a couple of tall peaks sticking up there. One of them's 10,000 feet and the other about 9,500. We call them Twin Peaks. It's pretty darn dangerous flying around them when they got clouds wrapped around their bases like it is today. Now, if you're smart, you'll just stay under the clouds and keep away from them peaks. Yeah, I guess so, Rip. Uh, We'll be careful. Thanks for the dope. Let's get started, Jim. Okay. Much obliged, Rip. We'll be back in a few hours. All right, Speed. I'm going to turn her over. Go ahead, boy. Flash had the engine running a while ago, so it's still warm. Yeah, go ahead and take her off. The oil temperature's 110 now. Okay, here we go. Ramshackle 
good old place. Yeah, just an old hunting shack. Cut your switches, Jim. All right. Here we are, Speed. Yeah, yeah, a good windstorm would blow this place over. Looks like there hadn't been a soul in it for years. I guess it hasn't been occupied since Mr. Croft died. Hey, that's funny. Somebody's torn the padlock off the door. Well, let's go in. Gosh, it's sure a dirty place. Say, Jim, look at this. Come here. Someone's been here and recently. Look at this can of pork and beans. That's just been opened. Well, and who is lurking in the vicinity of the old hunting shack? Can it be friend or foe? The padlock has been torn from the door. Certainly not a friendly gesture. Just what will happen to Jimmy and Speed? For the answer, listen to the next exciting episode of The Air Adventures of Jimmy Allen. <laughs> <laughs> 